In this course, you are going to learn creating a business plan, designing a logo, designing a website, making a promo video, and marketing your new business. Here we go. Have no energy to start your business? Drink coffee. Welcome back to this channel. You are watching Start Your Business with Immortal Tuts Plus, a five-part video series for future entrepreneurs who want to start an online or a small business. My name is Story. I'm a Tuts Plus creator. I'm gonna be your teammate and walk you through all the process, help you to start your incredible, profound, amazing. <laughs> Entrepreneurship. <laughs> I did drink a lot of coffee this morning, get a lot of energy. Purpose of creating this five part video series is to help you to create a holistic and coherent styled presence for your business online. To create that presence is not about just creating a great look online figure, it is actually a system. This system will at least include five key elements a clarified business plan, a website, your company logo, a promo video, and a general marketing plan. All of these elements kind of interconnected with each other, but each of them may have a specific role to play. And we are going to do all of them! Yes! In our last video, we have made our step one, which is to find out our business idea, write up our business plan, and make our first ever mood board. I wish you guys have done your exercise. If you're feeling a little bit lost here, I would highly recommend you to watch our last video. Cool, today gonna be a fun one because we are going to talk about logos. when we were planning this YouTube series, we did a general market research. Basically, we just created a questionnaire and sent out to our friends or random people who have done or want to do a small business. Uh, one of the questions inside that survey is, what was the biggest challenges or obstacles during your startup phase? Followed by budget control and building a website, creating a logo came to the third position. Um, Oh, by the way, we will cover building a website in our next video in terms of budget control. Good luck. I guess people are struggling to create a logo because we all agree that logo is too important to our business. So we all want to create the perfect logo. If this is also something that concerns you, in today's video, I just want to let you know, stop worrying about creating the perfect logo. Maybe you don't need a perfect logo. You just need a right logo. What do I mean by saying that? You will find out the answers after today's video. And hopefully you can find out the right one for you and make that one in Adobe Illustrator. What? Don't worry about that too much. I got shortcuts for you, okay? What is it? A business logo is a symbol made up of text and images that identifies a company. It is also the most fundamental and critical element that defining a brand visually. Graphic designers may tell you that creating a logo is all about creating a communication dynamic. Tell your stories, symbolizing your culture, boosting viewers' visual perception. Fantastic. These are great, but I don't think these are something that we can learn like people like you and me without any graphic designing background that we can learn those things in a short term or put it in practice. And to be fair, that is why graphic professionals get paid for, right? It's not about drawing few lines, creating few shapes, putting them together. It is about how can they use their years of experience, capture people's requests in a short time and putting those sporadic ideas into a symbolic story that is integrated, artistic, and meaningful. Respect. 
respect. Unfortunately, there's no shortcut for that. So if your new business is about graphic designing, then you shouldn't follow my step. Please stop watching the video. Go to get a degree, read books, learn theories, do a lot of exercises and practices, become a real graphic designer. Yes, sir! But the good news is, if your business is not about graphic designing or any designing work, you just want a logo. My approach in designing a logo is doable, achievable, practical, and suitable for everybody. First of all, let's just look at logo differently. How do you think about this logo? And how do you think about this logo? I guess we all are very familiar with this one. It's Apple's logo and it's just anywhere. And how many of you actually know this logo and know this company? What if I tell you both of these two companies were founded by a same person? His name is Steve Jobs. Let me tell you a story. Once upon a time, once upon the time in 1985, Steve Jobs get fired from Apple. But I think he's a quite resilient person. <gasps> mm, he soon founded this company called Next. Quite a straightforward name and very positive. Just simply looking for the next. Steve's business intention of funding Next was to develop computer workstations for higher education and business use. Good idea. At the time when he just founded Next, he had nothing other than a business concept. There's no mature business plan and no product and no services. The first thing Steve decided to do was to make a world-class logo for Next. Mm. So he reached out to Paul Rand, the best and pioneer graphic designer at the time, who had created some of the most recognizable logos, such as ABC and IBM. After a chat with Steve Jobs, Paul offered Steve a price of $100,000 to make a logo. Here are the terms and conditions. There will be only one logo, no other options, no revision request. That means Steve cannot make any change. I don't want to know your feedback and I won't make any corrections. There's no revision request. And whether if Steve use it or like it, he will still get the pay. That's actually a good deal. I won't make any judgment on this logo. To be honest, I personally like this logo. In fact, a lot of graphic designers, they still tell this story today as a successful marketing case study. Some people were especially inspired by how Paran values and packages his artwork. This morning at its offices in Silicon Valley, California, the company is about to get a first look at its new trademark, the signature it hopes to make familiar around the world. The designer, Paul Rand, created the logos for IBM, Westinghouse, UPS, and many others. Rand doesn't normally work for infant companies, even if they could afford him. But Next isn't an ordinary startup. The idea is to please don't open, don't look at the back first. This is the front. And don't get scared. This is not the design. <laughs> I did this was to sort of floor Steve when he saw it, you know, and figured, Jesus, a hundred thousand bucks down the drain. <laughs> I'm sure that's what he thought. Jobs has had a sneak preview of the logo and loves it. As he waits for a verdict from his staff, he can hardly contain his excitement. Assertive as he is, he values consensus. The point here is, does this work class logo really make next a world famous company? Compared to Next, Steve actually spent much less money, cost, and energy in creating Apple Local. Steve actually made it very clear. The reason he named the company Apple is because he just personally loving to eat Apple. When Apple just entered the industry, a lot of people actually did like it. People just think it's not take enough. It looks just too childish, not professional enough. So what? The logo story behind Apple and Next is actually one of my favorite stories in talking about logo designing. It always reminds me of fact. 
A logo can represent our company, but a logo is not our brand. What makes our company successful is not a logo, it's our brand. A series of experiences, reputations, perceptions that people have in using our product or services. Welcome back! I guess now it's my time to show you my logo. And this is the logo that I made for my small business, which is called Creative Handbook. I will provide online tutorials for individuals who want to create a better relationship with digital life. I would also offer content marketing services for businesses and brand. Should I add some drum effect here? It's vector, it's big yellow, it's colorful, and it got a big brand icon. I feel like a brand have this symbolic meaning about our brand. I guess it suits my company identity, suits the industry that I'm related to. The overall style just really follows the mood board that I created in our last video. So if you don't know what I'm talking about, please go to check out the last video. Otherwise, you will feel so lost. I want to make the overall style can represent the digital vibe and I feel vectorized illustration is one symbol of digital life. Bold yellow as my primary color. I just like yellow because yellow means hope and shine. Because I named this company Creative Handbook, it will give people the direct impression or association about what is this business about. This is gonna be something about creative, something about designing, something about marketing or education. Overall, it's really relatable to my business and what I am doing. I actually made a series of logo and I highly recommend you to do the same thing because you don't know how you're gonna use them in future. Maybe you will have a colorful package. In that case, maybe you will need a black and white version and I also made the individual brand icon one. I'm really happy with this logo. Actually, there is an interesting story behind this logo. The logo that I am showing you now is actually the second version that I made for my small business. And the difference between version one and version two is very subtle. As you can see, in version one, I put the colors on the left side, whereas in version two, I put the colors on the right hand side. After I finish and create this logo, I just send this logo to my Task Plus manager. Basically, just ask some feedback. He gave me a really useful suggestion. Let me just read out his words because it's very interesting. He said, Hey, Dory, I really like this bold brand colorful logo, but I'm going to request a really minor, if slightly pedantic change, which is to put colors on the right hand side of the brand. Whether it's correct or not, there's a conventional understanding that the left brand is analytical thinking and the right brand is about creating. I really like this feedback. First of all, it's it's brilliant. It really shows Team Tots Plus rigorous and responsible approach in any kind of content creation. And second, I just feel I did a great job. I made it. The core message that I want to deliver to people through this logo is to telling people you must use Create Handbook because it's the handbook that can activate your brand and reveal Utilize your inner creativity. I can make your brand colorful. I guess that's the key message I want to express. And I just feel my manager really received that message and he started to have his own thinking to process the idea and it just gave me this suggestion. I accept it. Yes, so I just made some correction. <laughs> I'm not Paul Rand. I'm listening and I can make correction. <laughs> I didn't mean to generate any story for the logo, but the story just generated itself. And now it turns out to be a great story that I can tell you. Yeah, maybe 10 years later, when Creative Handbook developed into a big company, I can tell people this story. Do you know, this logo actually is not my first version and blah, 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 blah. I guess now you guys probably quite curious how I make this 
this one. Let's just dive into know it, and I will share everything about how I create this logo with you. And we will also jump into Adobe Illustrator to make this happen. I will see you in know it. Nail it is all about learning skills, doing practice, and looking for shortcuts. So here, I just want to share with you my general logo making workflow. In short, there are four stages in my logo making workflow. Stage one: look for inspiration, aka explore ideas. Stage two: summarize, digest all the ideas I've collected in stage one. Take notes and summarize. Stage three: go to Envato Elements and look for my assets. Here we go. The final stage is to make the actual logo. Trust me, this is actually the easiest step overall. Thinking I'm kidding? Keep watching. Whenever I start a creative work, I always start with looking for inspirations. It is important. That is how we can get idea from, right? But looking for inspirations can be a time-consuming process. If you don't give yourself some limitations or some intentions, you might end up swimming in Instagram or Pinterest forever. So here, I will introduce you some tips that I feel useful in doing research. Logos. What are they, and where did they come from? Actually, more importantly, where the heck are they going in 2022? That's right. In this video, we are first of all, let's take a look at 2022 logo trend and understand what is happening in the industry. Is it going to be minimalism? Is it going to be big, bold color blocking, or is it going to be 90s nostalgia? Spoiler. I've put the link in the description box if you want to watch the whole video. Let's just break our bias about the word trendy, because some people just don't like trendy. They just feel like being trendy means being a follower. To me, being trendy means being new. I guess looking for some trendy video is the easiest way and quickest way to understand what is happening in the industry right now. It's kind of a shortcut. Next, I would like to read or research about logo designing basics. It doesn't need to be intensive, really, just basics. In this lesson, we'll go through the eight logo design styles you need to know. Let's take a look. Letter mark or monogram. A letter mark is a type-based logo made of a few letters. It is often used if a company's name is made of two or more words. A letter mark will shorten the company name by using only its initials, resulting in simplicity. Word mark. A word mark focuses on the business name alone. I've also put the link in the description box if you want to watch the whole video. I feel like understanding some basics is to set up myself some boundaries because I'm a very imaginative person, very easy to get lost in some points. Understanding some basics or some theories really helps me to bond my imagination and avoid those irrelevant creative ideas. Otherwise, I will get crazy. Last stop, place it. A website that offers logo making templates, or for people to generate mockups if people can upload their own design work. It's a part of the Imbato family. More relatable. Here, you can find the easiest way to make a logo automatically. Yes, automatically. Here is how it works. Let's go to place it. Let's go to logo. Let's make a logo. Type out your company name and select an industry. You can also view all if you want. Then apply. Boom, here we go. Here is where it inspired me to use a brand symbol as my primary icon. Let's just have a closer look. Here we can also find out some customizable options. If you are happy with the design, you can actually end up your logo designing journey here. It will save you a lot of time and it's just super easy. Basically, just go to type down. Okay, I think after all of that research, I had generated a concrete idea about my logo. And here is my summary. It will be a combination mark that has to have creative handbook words on it. 
it will include a big brand icon. It must follow the style I set up with my mood board. Vector images in both yellow and colorful. Okay, I think now I'm happy to go to Emoto Elements and look for my creative assets. Having known what I want can definitely drive the precise direction of what I was looking for in Emoto Creative Ocean. I think I will need both graphic templates and fonts for making my logo. Let's just start with graphics. Let's just go to graphic templates. Let me try business first. Mmm, there's a lot of choice, but I think they are not the one that I'm looking for precisely. Let me try business icons. Let's take a look at this one. Whoa, very yellowy and very colorful. Oh my gosh, it's just right for me. I wanted this one, no question. Let's just download it. Let's just take a look here. Okay, if we want to twist a format in Adobe Illustrator, we will need either EPS or AI format files. And this is the APS one. So that's workable. Whoa, very lucky here. I just get my templates very quick. Okay, now let's just take a look at the fonts. In Envato Elements Assets Library, there are thousands of fonts. And I won't be able to stay here too long. Let me just select a random one and I will show you how to install it. Let's just download it. Here we go. Let's open it. Install. Done. Once I've done all of the preparation, I think now I have the confidence to jump into Adobe Illustrator. Even if you have no experience in using Adobe Illustrator, you can make this logo in just 10 steps. Step one. Let's just open Adobe Illustrator. Step two, let's just create a new file and select a preset. Here, we're going to use print. Step three is to place our creative assets into Adobe Illustrator. Place means import in Illustrator. I don't know why they use place, but it's just import. If the file is too big and you can't see it properly, you can just simply hold Command, then press minus to zoom out the artboard so that you can see the overview. Now it's time to scale down this picture a little bit. Do you remember we talked about this in our last video? Click the corner, then hold Shift, then drag, it will scale down proportionally. Hold Command, then press plus to zoom in. Here's another handy shortcut. If you want to move your canvas or your artboard, you can just hold, space, hold, hold, hold. Can you see the changes? The error just become a hand shape. Step four, I call this cutout. Basically just Remove, remove, remove all the unwanted icons or images or pictures because we only, only want to use that brand. Yeah, let's just get rid of them. In order to cut out, we will need to ungroup the picture first. What does that mean is to separate the whole picture into each individual element because we just want to use a brand, right? Now I can get rid of the others. Delete. Done. Step five.
Step 5. Add rulers. Adding rulers will give us the help for guidance on where to place our objects. Here I would like to add two rulers, one in vertical and one in horizontal. Let's just press Command plus R. R for ruler, I guess. Okay, let's just make one vertical and one horizontal. Step 6. Move my brand into the right place. Into the right place. That's it. Step 7. Make a black rectangle shape. Here we will need to use the shape tool. Select it and draw a rectangle. Once we're happy with the size, I would like to make some changes on the rectangle. Uh, because as you can see, the rectangle is kind of too straight and I don't want that straight corner. I want a little bit of round corner. And by doing that, you can just simply, can you see these little dots? You can just drag. Okay, now they are round corner. Step eight is to add text by using type tool. Let's just select the type tool first. I will start with creative. Then choose the right font, the right size. I'm happy with it. Now let's just make handbook. Handbook is slightly trickier than creative. Let's just type it here and use the same process to make it into the right typeface and right size. Now, we will need to do two things. First, go to Arrange to bring Handbook to the front and change the color. In Adobe Illustrator, each object's placement order will determine its visual order. So we will need to bring it to the front, otherwise we can't see it. You're free to make any adjustments in the property panel here until you're happy with your work. Step nine, color the brand. Color the brand. First of all, let's just make five circles. Again, we will need to use the shape tool here. Make five circles. Then let's just color them into our preferred colors. If you have had a color palette, you can place your color palette here. Then you can use eyedropper tool to color them so you can get the exact colors as your selected color palette. It's very handy. Once I've done all the colors, now I need to squeeze them into the brand. Squeeze, squeeze, squeeze. Wait a minute, don't get too excited because we're going to talk about some common mistakes, okay? So first of all, let's just look at these two arrows. 
black arrow is selection tool and white arrow is direct selection tool. Selection tool selected the whole project, whereas direct selection tool selected the components and paths of the project. Whenever you accidentally use direct selection tool and cause the whole picture getting too messy, don't be panic. Command plus Z, just undo it. Next, once you have deleted the unwanted images, don't forget to regroup your file again. It will be much easier for your later process, okay? Finally, let's talk about the worst case where you just messed up all the files. What should we do? Don't worry, place them again. And just do it again. Oh no! Cool, I guess that's all I wanna share with you today. And I hope you guys had fun with me. After today's video, I would highly recommend you to take some time for yourself and do some practice. Give yourself some encouragement to use Adobe Illustrator and also give yourself some time to dive into and model elements and find out the right assets for yourself. Remember, finding out the right assets will save you a lot of time, a lot of cost, and a lot of energy. Don't have bias about creative assets. I think people tend to look at the similarities of those creative assets, but sometimes we just ignore the difference, how we can use them differently. Next video is gonna be a big one because we are going to create our website. I think it's a little bit scary one, even myself, I'm not that confident in creating website. I guess nowadays, a lot of website building tools have been made very, very user-friendly, but building a website can still be a time-consuming, labor-intensive project. We need to have a different mindset. We need to have a different mindset. mindset. <sighs> Hopefully, we can nail it. I hope you guys feel this video is useful or inspiring. I would appreciate if you can leave your comments below, give us some feedback, let us know how you think about it and what kind of video you want us to make. It will mean a lot to my work personally and to my team, Tuts Plus. Cool, I will let you guys to enjoy the rest of your day and hope you guys have a great day. Hope you guys have fun. Hope you guys all the best. I love you guys. Mwah. Bye.